So we are driving from Redwood National Park to Lassen Volcanic National Park and we stopped in a little town called Weaverton which is super cute. It's a great area to stop if you're driving through. We ended up getting lunch because we're having some generator problems. Our generator would not turn our microwave or our some of the outlets on so we couldn't use our blender so we stopped by this place called Mama Llama's, got some smoothies, picked up a little cookie from the shop next door. It's a cool little town. It reminds me of like a little mini Jackson Hole, which we went to a couple of weeks ago, which you can check the link above. Next stop is Lassen Volcanic National Park. Dreaming of places, wide open spaces. I've been suffocating here too long. I can't afford ya. Now Lassen Volcanic National Park is about 166 square miles and it's surrounded by the Lassen National Forest. Just got back from the Loomis Museum. One thing we learned that's pretty neat is the broke off volcano, which used to be the biggest volcano in the park, has eroded to essentially nothing over millions of years of wind, rain, snow, glaciers traveling back and forth. And the reason is volcanic rock is actually very fragile. So it does erode easier and much more quickly than other rock. It's actually been called a little Yellowstone by some people because it offers some hot springs, lava beds, some fumaroles, and a pretty wide array of wildlife, including about 50 black bear in this area. So behind us is where the lake would have been, but it's all dried up. So we're not gonna go all the way down, but it was a cool walk and it gave us a nice assortment of terrain to traverse over and some stuff to see as far as like the green and the moss and the devastated forest. And then it brings us out to, of course, Chaos Crags, which is lava. And so that's pretty cool to see. Back to the van. So right after the Loomis Museum, there's a campground and there's actually a dump station. So we were able to pump out our tanks and get fresh water. Cause we go through fresh water really quickly because we have our little filter on it. We actually take that and we fill up our five gallon bucket as well. And that's kind of how we stay hydrated for about four days. We weren't sure if we'd be using that as much, if it was, if it was gonna be not worth the space we're sacrificing for it. But I would say that's been probably the top mod we've done is having that five gallon water dispenser and just pumping it up, filling up the bottles and then filling it up every time we get potable water here. And we were in Glacier, we picked up these Osprey um, water packs to put into our backpack just to be able to carry a little bit more water without a huge jug. And mine tastes like soap. So if this has ever happened to you, let us know in the comments below and tell us how you fixed it. We are at the Devastated Area Trail. This is a half mile loop and it just takes you through part of the devastated forest from the May of 1915 eruption. Yeah, in this trail here, you can look at a bunch of rocks like the one behind me, which slid from the avalanche and the mudslide from the eruption from Lassen Peak. You can tell there's little blobs inside from where the lava cooled off and heated up and yeah, kind of like a moon rock looking thing in the middle of the woods here. cold this morning it was extremely hot this afternoon and it is dropping temperature especially because we're at almost the highest point in the park so definitely if you when you come to Lassen Volcanic National Park bring your layers but also bring your shorts we are making our way up Lassen Peak it's a 4.4 mile hike about a 2,000 foot elevation change very scenic so far you might see some snow up top and we should be above 10,000 feet once we get to the peak Taking this hike is awesome. You get just views that you can see for miles right over here, right over there. That's Lake Helen. And then um, a little bit further this way is Emerald Lake, which we'll be checking out later. And we'll show you why it's called Emerald Lake. <laughs> 
Now we started this at nine o'clock this morning and there's a good amount of people. It's not overly crowded. That down there is the parking lot, so it's pretty small. So it definitely fills up quick. But we started a little bit later today than we wanted, but we actually ended up fixing our generator. Alright, we are at the peak and it is quite windy up here. Like I said a lot of people do stop at the scenic overlook right before this. I would say just keep going. It's only about maybe 0.2 tenths of a mile. Uh, it's a little challenging, windy up here. It's not too too bad, but worth it with these views. You get to see the horizon and you get to see the crater behind you. So I say do it. So we are sitting at Emerald Lake enjoying our lunch with a beautiful view. We are finally having our cheese from the Jackson Hole Farmer's Market that we went to. So if you haven't seen that video and cheese, check it out. It'll be linked above. In Emerald Lake, it actually gets its name not just because of the trees that are reflecting into it, but the certain species of algae that's in here. It gives it the appearance you see right now. Just like Yellowstone, you can smell it from a mile away. The sulfur here at Sulfur Works. Uh, we're actually located right here. It's like the center of the heart of what once was a broke off volcano. And we put all the pieces together, last of peak, broke off mountain. Some of the other summits at this park are all kind of pieces of what once was a massive volcano some 400,000 years ago. It's interesting and also a little bit creepy that this is the same magma system that existed during broke off volcano. They write that this volcano itself is not inactive, it is only slumbering. So it's only a matter of time. So behind us is Cold Boiling Lake. It was about a, just a under a mile walk to get out here. Like Tyler said, super eerie. This is also a very high frequented area by bears. So we have our bear spray on us. Um, you can also take a trail from Bumpus Hell that will actually lead you to this, or you could continue on the trail out to Bumpus Hell from here. Just because of time and everything we're trying to do today, we're actually gonna walk back to the van and we're gonna drive to Bumpus Hell. And Cold Boiling Lake is made up of cold gases that are actually coming through the water and that's where you'll see some little boiling. Not as active as those sulfur works were, but it's still pretty cool to see. All right, so we've made it to Bumpus Hell and the reason it's got its name is in 1864, Kendall Bumpus had discovered this place. He wanted to turn it into a tourist area and one day he was leading a tour. He had cautioned them where they were stepping and right after that he walked and stepped directly into a boiling hydrothermal area that was 240 degrees severely burned his leg and his dreams of turning this into a tourist spot had shattered unfortunately and remember that boiling water is 212 degrees so it was even hotter than that so hence the name bumpus hell and within this 16 acre area there are over 75 fumaroles hot springs and mud pots here it's just so interesting looking at the change of scenery from where we were in this whole hot spring area the yellow um, the hot springs, the scent, the smell, it's definitely a highlight here. Come check it out. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our video on Lassen Volcanic National Park and this amazing, weird, 
crazy place. Of course, if you found value in this video, comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and we will see you in San Francisco. You just trip? Yeah. yeah we got that. If you saw our van mods video, which we posted, up link up here. Um, <laughs> so we were at the desert... So we were at the... So we were at the devastated. He's found another chipmunk. It wasn't too bad of, it wasn't, it took us about an hour and a half. I was quite windy at the observation deck, like at the observation deck. Like. Um, so because we have our little, fil because we have our little filter on it, Oops, I'm videoing. Fumaroles, mud pots, and what? There are over 75 mud fumarole. And within this six, six mud pots. Mud fumaroles, pots, fumaroles, hot springs. Hot springs. 16, 75. Within this 16 area. Groot, is that you? All these, these rocks with these blobs of different types of, and you can tell there's little blobs or with a lava, you can tell there's little blobs inside. Really fun hike, really fun hike so far. We learned that this, this mountain is actually 20, is, is only 27,000 years old. <laughs> Let me do it. But we actually ended up fixing our generator. Yeah, actually what you have to do is you have to crawl underneath the van and there's a little, slide our little door you have to pop off the generator it's actually a breaker switch um right in the top left hand side of the generator and it was switched off somehow he must have hit a bump and flipped it on good to go got our smoothies so if you're ever getting your generator on but not power to anything in your van check that